as we have noted before, the way we win in this debate is actually rather important. Slightly different than a military operation where the moral high ground really is not important. So the moral high ground, the literal high ground is important in a military campaign, but the moral high ground is not. So this is a kind of a punny nuance, but basically the terms of the debate, ideally what we want to do is the big leagues. So if you get, we, we're, we're not ready to debate yet, but we're going to decisively crush this whole notion about the earth being flat. But to do that, there's actually a lot more better debaters like the Dave McKeegan. But basically what we need to have is a neutral third party. They're going to they're gonna have to have party A, party B, a timer. You have Nathan, you got one minute. Dave, you got one minute. No, Nathan, Nathan you cannot mute Dave he, or vice versa. You're going you're gonna to have to duke it out. And, and I think Flat Earth would lose. I, absolutely. But what, what I'm talking about, Flat Earth is a very small subset. They within so basically this is a, so I want to I don't do caricatures. The majority of professing Christians do not. Again, I don't do caricatures. The majority of professing Christians do not believe in flat earth. So we talked about flat earth because it's low hanging fruit to for us to totally crush. But uh, but I I don't do miss characterizations and caricatures of a religion the majority of Christians do not believe in flat earth and basically a, a, an overwhelming majority Catholics and Orthodox they don't actually believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible so again there's a you, did you see what I did here no mischaracterizations most Christians don't believe the earth is flat and a, and a large majority of Christians don't interpret the Bible literally but we're going to we're gonna we're gonna push on with the specific refutation of Bible interpretations, where it is interpreted literal, literally. If you take the claim of the Bible fundamentalist interpretation, there's one, two problems here. The fundamentalist defeats, by the merits of science, the fundamentalist's own arguments defeat their own thesis on two occasions. One is Genesis. The second and following the initial Genesis narrative, we get to Noah and a flood. Two events thoroughly disproven by population genetics. Without the Noah event, it would already be easy to, to defeat the idea that the human population came from two, two individuals. The modern genomic science has thoroughly proven that it is an impossibility for the current human population to be descended from two anatomically modern persons. So that's already a problem, contradiction there. And then, if you take the fundamentalist narrative, there was a sec so in a scientific term, what if you interpret the Bible literally, you would be talking about a second, you would be talking about a mass extinction event that leaves basically uh, where we're basically not, so basically this, this, is the, this is the interesting thing. People who don't know Christianity interpret everybody descended from Adam and Eve. But there, but if you take the Bible interpretation literally, there was a mass extinction event where the earth is flooded and only the people on Noah's Ark were saved. So every nation, the Chinese, the Japanese, all originals on Taiwan, Africans, Afrikaners, uh, descendants of the Dutch, everybody descended from Noah's ship. That is, that is false. That is genetically impossible. That is scientifically false. Um, so again, we're not, Richard Dawkins is going to be the best one to jump in here uh, because he's more familiar with the ge genomics. But you have two events, the Adam and Eve narrative, which population genetics shows can is false. And then you have the second mass extinction event where, where it is argued that everybody on earth is descended from people who were saved on Noah's Ark. This is scientifically not true. And also... The Earth itself, unless you unless you believe there's a flat Earth with a container holding up the air, copyright credits to Nathan Oakley or whoever invented that idea. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on a wild goose chase to to find out which copyright belongs to which person. Every little stupid minor detail. But basically, the 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 amount of water on on this Earth. Okay, so if all the ice caps melted, we take the worst scenario. The entirety of the of the north and the south, 
all of East Antarctica and West Antarctica melted. Uh, basically, large parts of the North China Plain would be flooded. And there would be there's actually models on this. What happens if every ounce of ice melts? Many parts will be flooded. Parts of the low lane United States will be flooded. New York City, Florida will, will suffer severe damage if all the ice eventually melts. But at no time will is there enough water to actually cover the earth. And, and one part is the roof of the world. We're going to shift to Tibet. Tibet is massively standing, even if all the ice melted. So people have seen, this is spoiler alert. So we have this, you know, stupid capitalism spoiler alert. We're going to give a spoiler alert about Waterworld. So let's, if you don't want to listen to spoiler, uh, turn off this video. But we're going to begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Begin. Waterworld, other fictions where the whole earth, um, well, basically nearly the whole earth is engulfed in water. That will never happen. If all the ice melts, many nations will remain. You will have, China will still exist, but, you know, basically they're going to lose a lot of the, uh, the North China Plain, what's going to happen is it's going to be unfair because militarily powerful states, when, if the water melts, the, the climate will change and parts of our areas that are now arid is probably going to become arable because they're more close to the ocean. So parts of Outer Mongolia or, you know, the sovereign nation of Mongolia, what, what was called Outer Mongolia as part of the Republic of China, would probably be arable. And, and what I think would actually happen is big powers, if, if they lose, if they end up losing some land, I think what's going to happen is real power takes over. Never mind the United Nations, international law, what's legal, what's illegal. I think if, if all of a sudden China lost the North China Plain, I think they're, I think they're going to militarily invade Outer Mongolia. Okay, but, but a country like uh, Bangladesh, which would be completely covered in water, cannot invade anybody. They're, they're, they're just, if that happens, they're finished. They're going to be refugees. You know, basically that's that. If you're, if you're strong, they stronger nations like China, they, they take over others like Tibet, okay? And weaker nations, they, you know, basically, they, some, they basically, they're, they're at the mercy of, you know, becoming refugees. It, it's, it's, it's not about ethnicity. It's not about race. It's about raw military power. So you have these events that basically at, on a scientific hardcore level, it is absolutely this proof. You can absolutely materially determine if the human population could have arose from from a bottleneck so mass extinction flooding Noah's flood a population bottleneck could could you have Adam and Eve science can answer that can the can the present population descend from a people on Noah's Ark no it's not gonna happen so these these are scientific questions there's so basic but for a person of a matter of faith that you know the 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 Bible is their authority people came from Adam and Eve and and there was an ex event, the earth was flooded, and everybody arose from the Noah's Ark. They believed that as a literal event, and nothing in science will change their opinion about that. But, so basically, we're, this is just the beginning of the, ref the doctoral refutation, dissertation, defense. There are, uh, there, there are, objectively, parts of the New Testament are completely gone. So basically, if heaven and earth will, will, will pass away, but basically, basically there's, a, there's a verse that... You know, basically, it's to the effect that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word is forever. Basically, the word will remain forever. So that that is a problem. If you interpret the word as the word of God, as in the written word, the, the fragments of the New Testament are lost forever. So so basically, in history, there was there was a definitive source. And if God is protecting the Bible, the New Testament, how can anyone explain that parts of the New Testament are lost forever, gone? never to be recovered and this is this is no different than lost ancient chinese texts there are lost ancient chinese scriptures that are lost either due to war basically warfare war pillaging all the mayhem war rape pillaging mayhem things are burnt okay the fire of alexandria burnt the emperor of the Qing empire of first the emperor of china buries books bury scholars alive fire moisture water decay there are parts of the bible new testament christian bible that are lost forever just as there are parts of the chinese ancient classics that are lost forever but if so if one says that this one's religion what where the word is eternal and protected by god then it is impossible to have what you have today bible 
parts of the Bible missing, lost, missing in action, gone, destroyed forever.